Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Um, I had a, uh, a lovely opportunity to have a chat with um, Eric Guth, um, 4Z1UG, uh, on QSO today um, a while back, and um, I was talking to him about uh, a, a VFO oscillator I tried to build uh, many, many years ago when I first became a ham uh, and got frustrated at the time where uh, I didn't have any access to the likes of oscilloscopes and I just really couldn't see what the oscillator was doing and, you know, funny old thing, it was uh, it was destined to failure. Um, and also I've, I've been sort of following uh, Bill Mira on Solder Smoke and um, his um, experiments and playing around with uh, his radio for picking up some of the shortwave and uh, I must admit, I remember years ago uh, when I lived in India, uh, religiously tuning in to the BBC at least uh, every morning on HF on the shortwave radio there uh, to pick up the news. And it was always a thrill to sort of tune in. Um, the last couple of nights I've been doing the same thing with, unfortunately I don't have very good general uh, coverage receivers here. Uh, so it wasn't that flash, but... Uh, yeah, that sort of thrill of picking up that radio and it, the, and it was rising and falling as the atmospheric attenuation was coming through and uh, yeah, it was, it was actually really quite cool. So um, based on, on that, I've decided that I'm also going to, um, to build a, a little AM radio, and just a receiver, um, and what I wanted to do was to use some junk parts that I've got lying around. So I've got a bit of an assortment here, um, haven't quite decided what the actual configuration for the radio is going to be. Um, but I do know I want to tune probably around sort of 5.9 to 6.2 uh, as a minimum, uh, which will allow me to at least pick up the uh, the Radio New Zealand broadcast into the Pacific in the evenings, uh, which would be quite nice just to play in the shack as I'm doing other things. Um, so I guess sort of from an oscillator point of view, I want to re I, want, I do want to use this. Um, it's it's a, a mixture of components. This is not part of the actual VFO here, it's come off another radio, uh, these are all beyond what we call beyond economical repair, um, so rather than throwing parts out they've been sitting in the junk box for a while, but you know a lovely smooth reduction gearbox there, you know the anti-backlashing there, um, so yeah I'm definitely going to use that uh, as, the, uh, as the, the variable capacitor, I've got the, the, the top and bottom there and build into this um, the, the actual VFO itself. Uh, the buffer amplifier and any other amplification required to get it up to the, to the right level for the mixer. So that's definitely going to use that. Um, that's one of the boards that sits inside it. A nice sort of solid form there. I think it's a crockery form of the sounds of it. Uh, for the, the coil uh, and the, the trimmer and pattern capacitors there. So I'll strip all that off and, and certainly reuse these parts here. Not quite sure what the oscillator is going to be. If it's going to be a Hartley or uh, say a Colpitz or a Clap. Um, haven't quite decided there what's the best way of doing business, um, but either way, it's certainly going to be mounted in that uh, into this cover here just to help provide it some thermal protection and uh, keep the old hands away from changing any um, capacitance and/or inductance. So uh, that's the plan. Um, will be more the capacitance, but never mind that aside. Um, the plan will be to, to utilise that. In terms of the, the IF, I uh, haven't quite decided on what that's going to be, and, and why I say that is I've sort of got a few junk box um, options there for, for filters. Um, I'm going to use a, a commercial filter for the simple reason I've got a few of them lying around in the, like I say, in the junk box. There's one here sitting at 3.18 uh, megahertz, um, 6k uh, bandwidth, so that, that could be an option there. Uh, that's that old eBay um, board, that's quite common out there. Um, already had one of those filters taken off for the SSB tramping rig, uh, but the 42 there is a, an AM, um, an AM uh, or bandwidth type filter, so sitting at 9 megs with uh, plus or minus uh, 3.6 kilohertz, so also at 7.2 odd, so um, that could be an option there. Um, when I tuned to the uh, Radio New Zealand. Um, uh, frequency it didn't seem to be a full 10 kilohertz so um, I might get away with having a um, slightly reduced uh, bandwidth and um, still get a reasonably good uh, copy on that another option here I think it's, I think it's that of an older again beyond economical repair um, IC720 but I've still got some filters there that can be used in due course um, an AM1 sitting here at 
10.7 megs, 10.75, and another one sitting down there at just over uh, 9 megs. So, and again, another option there. Um, I'm not after small, so maybe I'll save those for, for portable rigs and just use maybe this big, um, this big filter here. But we'll see what happens. Um, in terms of the amplifiers themselves, uh, what I would, wouldn't mind doing is sort of, as you can see back here, I've got a junk box of, of old circuit boards that when I've finished using them or the radio gets pulled apart, um, rather than just sort of, well, I don't want to throw them away at all, they just sort of get dumped into here and, and parts get robbed off, as you can see here. Um, so I wouldn't mind reusing some of these, these are J310s. Um, I know a lot of people who are watching this, um, don't particularly like that, but um, you know this is just a little rig for, well, a little um, receiver for playing around with as I um, sit here with the COVID-19 lockdown. So it'd be nice to sort of reuse some of these components that are just sitting there. Um, I'll probably go with the same configuration, which is having the two devices in a cascode format, um, creating a pseudo um, dual gate MOSFET. Um, so that's the plan there, uh, which then gives me the option to use the second gate for potentially AGC, I'm not quite sure there. I must admit, I quite like the sort of the the coming and going effect uh, on on the short wave with the atmospherics. Uh, to me, that's sort of part of it. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens if I uh, elect to use um, AGC or or a manual gain control. We'll see what happens there. Um, so yeah, like the plan is to use those. In terms of the mixer, might reuse one of these again out of the junk box, uh, an ADE dash one, so seven dBm uh, mixer. Uh, then, we'll, uh, yeah, so we'll look to use that, which then will dictate how much drive needs to come out of that, um, out of that amplification of of that um, of that uh, oscillator. So it's definitely going to have probably a BJT for the oscillator itself, uh, feeding into a J310 because of the nice high input impedance uh, acting as the buffer, uh, and then um, more than likely uh, have a, a second uh, BJT uh, on the output of that combination to amplify the signal up to the required, if I recall, should be about 1.414 volts peak to peak, I think it is, whatever it is, the 7 dBm uh, into that 50 ohm load uh, of the ADE-1, so um, that'll be the plan there. Um, sort of getting back to the VFO, which I'll cover in the next video because I'll be doing that one next, um, sort of following some of the guidance out of um, the solid state design for the radio amateur and and uh, have the VCC for the uh, for the amplifier or for the the VFO um, quite low, so uh, potentially six seven volts around there somewhere, just to reduce that sort of RF current heating. Um, might be nice too. I bet these have been sitting around for a long, long time. Um, all various values of polystyrene capacitors um, that I, I got many many moons ago, which have never been used. Um, they were purchased or somehow obtained, I can't quite remember how, for the specific purposes of making uh, variable frequency oscillators. So the plan is to, to use those and hopefully, fingers crossed, um, they'll perform well to keep things uh, nice and stable. Um, I've got some NPO ceramic somewhere as well, but my plan was to, to try and utilise these first uh, and then go from there. So um, that's that's my idea. Um, nothing novel, nothing too new um, from an audio amplifier point of view. Might look to reuse this one again. Uh, that was had the uh, the push pull uh, on the output. Um, J3 uh, 3906. For, sorry for uh, input there. Um, and if I recall, that's probably a um, yeah a 5534 uh, audio amp in the middle. So might look to reuse that. Might. Um, do a bit of uh, testing on that just to see how it performs and, 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 and uh, look to, to reuse that. But uh, like I say, nothing new, nothing novel, just just a good opportunity to have a play around with, with making a nice stable um, VFO, which would be quite fun. And, uh, and like I say, it would be really nice to see these, these mechanical components there. Uh, to me that's really nice, it should be, uh, should be quite fun. Okay, I'm starting to ramble here, so I will uh, knock it on the head. And uh, wish everybody um, 73s, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers all.